Hello and welcome to San Jose State Spartan Football Weekly, a new show that takes a look at all things San Jose State athletics and especially focuses on the Spartan football team. We have a great show for you as we take a look at San Jose State's women's soccer team. We'll also hear a heartwarming story about Anthony Larsifal, the senior defensive tackle on the Spartans, and his return to football activities. And of course, we'll preview the San Jose State Stanford game with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. First, Let's take a look back at the Sac State San Jose State game and the win 24 to nothing. Let's go to the highlights. First meeting of the two programs in school history. There is San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher taking the field for the first time as a Spartan. First possession was a three and out for San Jose State. Garrett Saffron throws right to Benet Ben Wickery in their first offensive chance, who picks it off and returns at 33 yards. He had seven interceptions last year, did Ben Wickery, and that set up this 37 yard Austin Lopez field goal. He was perfect last year, picks up right where he left off with the 37 yard field goal. 3 nothing San Jose State after the first quarter. On the first drive of the second, quarter Saffron throws a deep ball and finds Sean Linton well he's he's wearing the wrong color jersey second interception for San Jose State ensuing possession fails drives the team 83 yards on five plays finishing with a 31 yard touchdown to Chandler Jones he had 130 yards and eight catches and it's now 10 to nothing San Jose later in the corner with just two minutes left Jesse Aguilar 46 yard field goal attempt is blocked by Deshaun Frierson Spartans running the two-minute offense after that, and they wouldn't need all that much time. Fails to Grigsby, 15-yard score, and check out some of the, the replay on this one. You can see that David Fails really going through a lot of things, and Jared Lawson also with a big block here to pick up that, offside, uh, that outside linebacker. Blocks the play and then Fails has an open lane to throw. And not only was it a good touchdown strike from Fails to Grigsby, but check out the progression he goes through. He looks towards his tight end first, can't see that he's open. And then he checks down to Grigsby, sees him in single coverage, fires over the middle. And that's a score for San Jose State, up 17 to nothing at the half. And the Spartans would be cruising from this point on. After a field goal miss on the first possession of the half by Sacramento State, Jason Simpson takes the handoff. After he gets the touches from Tyler Irving going down and takes this one, 55 yards, new career high for Jason Simpson. 21 carries, 135 yards, and a touchdown as he makes it 24 to nothing, and that would be the final. But let's take a look at the defense in this game. There are a couple of big stands for the Spartan D in the red zone particularly. Here's one in the fourth quarter. With the ball on the eight-yard line, Saffron tries to go to his favorite target, Morris Norris, incomplete. Then they give it to Ezekiel Graham, nothing doing. Sac State 0 for 2 in the red zone and 8 of 21 on third downs. It was also the Spartans with the sacks, three of them overall, two from Eugene Taylor in this game. He held Sacramento State, and the Spartan defense held Sacramento State to 278 yards on offense on 79 plays as San Jose State uh, really did pick it up when they needed to on defense in this game. They let some, some big drives go from Sacramento State, but overall buckled down in the red zone, and of course they went on to win. There was some inaccuracies from David Fales. However, you Sarah won there to Kyle Nunn on the drop pass and also here to Kyle Nunn. But if you were thinking he wasn't accurate, check out this pass right into the basket for Andrew Volert. And it was a San Jose State victory. They go to 1-0 on the season. Sac State falls to 0-1. San Jose State takes an eight-game winning streak into Stanford this weekend, spanning back to last season. We'll take our first break on the program, but up next we'll take a look at San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher and his return home as a Spartan football coach for the first time. You're watching San Jose State Spartan Football Weekly. Una mas. Let's go, una mas. Una mas. Una mas. We taste better for lunch or dinner. It takes intense preparation, finesse, and precision to be crowned as the king in a unanimous decision. It bobs and it weaves around every corner. With its hit list of features, this car is a performer. So roll on to victory with the path of least resistance. The new 2014 Scion TC is made to go the distance. The 
Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. For first-year San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher, the win against Sacramento State last week was not only his first as an FBS coach, it was also a homecoming, returning to the field where he played on as a child. We sat down with Ron Carragher in this week's Spartan sit-down. For San Jose State first-year head coach Ron Carragher, coaching inside Spartan Stadium completes a full-circle journey. Well, my first memory of my first college football game I ever went to was right here, Spartan Stadium, back in the early 70s. and. Uh, and I grew up a fan of the local teams, the universities. Uh, I went to San Jose State football camps back when, uh, when Jack Elway was coaching, Claude Gilbert was coaching, Terry Shea was an offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, he recruited me. So I have a lot of memories of, of growing up in this area. I played in this stadium in a, in a championship game and played in my final game I ever played in high school was an all-star game in this stadium. So just a lot of memories of the San Jose area, San Jose State community uh, having grown up here. The Bellarmine High School graduate attributes his success to the influence his Bay Area coaches gave him while he played for them. The biggest influence is growing up, uh, I grew up and I had male coaches in my life that helped mentor me and, and helped channel my, my energy in a positive direction and sports was a great outlet for that and uh, being a, a young male uh, athlete and uh, I'm very thankful for that and that really planted a seed in me of, of wanting to make a difference. San Jose State is Carragher's fourth university in his coaching career. Those influences helped Coach Carragher lead his teams to six bowl appearances as a player and assistant coach and three conference co-championships in the last six years as a head coach. For those who have played and or coached for Carragher, they know it is his passion for the game that shows. Life goes by so fast and, and I think uh, you've got to be excited, you've got to be, uh, uh, enthusiasm is contagious. We say football is a high energy sport and uh, I just love it. I like having my coaches energetic and, and because I think the players feed off that. So I have a great time. I love what I do and uh, I'm very blessed to be in this position to lead this program. That enthusiasm is shared with the second year special teams coach Fred Judici who has coached in the Bay Area for the past 29 years. Judici says that the transition was seamless. He, he's like me. He, he, we're both local guys and we're on the same age and kind of went through the same paths, except he took one and made a right turn to Kentucky. <laughs> okay, and I stayed in the area. But, yeah, he, it, uh, Coach Kerrigan and I uh, both love the kids and, and are always smiling and, have, and enjoying our, and our time here. And... Uh, that's why I hit it off with him immediately when I met him back in December. So did you have any interaction before, whether it be at Santa Clara or any, anywhere else in the Bay Area? No, you know, we never met. And that's the thing he and I always laughed about. That. How do we never not know each other? He was at UCLA when I was at Stanford. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it just, you know, and we all knew we, we, he was good friends with guys that I had grew up in my neighborhood that went to Bellarm and played with him. And for some reason, we just never met. But I always knew who he was and, uh, and who we are together. Coach Carragher takes control of a program that won a school record 11 games last season and reached their first bowl game since 2006. To be able to take over the reins of this program, uh, I think we're on the cusp of something very special. Heading into the Mountain West Conference is huge for not just the football program, but Spartan Athletics uh, with the, the great recruiting class that we had, uh, the team that's coming back. I, I really feel good about the program, where we're at, and the momentum that we have. And I told the team, uh, we want to sustain the success. We don't want to be a one-and-done program. We want to continually compete for conference championships year in and year out. Although Coach Carragher never set a goal to return home as a head coach, he admits it's emotional being under the lights at Spartan Stadium. Well, it's always home, and I always uh, I remember coming to games here and and uh, and visualize it. would Be fun to be a part of this program, uh, but you know, life takes you on different journeys and different travels and paths and whatnot. So it's it's really neat how things have come back around, and I'm back home again. Up next, we'll step outside San Jose State football and take a look at the women's soccer team and their start to the season. Plus, we'll also take a look at Anthony Larcival, the senior defensive tackle, and his return to the team and field he loves so much. More on Spartan Football Weekly when we come back. Unamas. Come on, baby. Unamas. 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 
Una Moss. We taste better for lunch or dinner. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. The San Jose State women's soccer team is well underway and they return two of their leading scorers from a year ago. Get Sports Focus reporter Angela Santoro has the story on the preview of their season. I'm here with head coach Jeff Lightman. Jeff, talk to me a little bit about the preseason camp for you guys. Uh, preseason went well. The girls worked very hard. Uh, we worked hard. We had a lot of fun. They really came together as a group, uh, which was one of our main focuses. Uh, after last couple seasons was to really buy in, um, work incredibly hard, and have fun together. So talk to me a little bit about your assistant coach. You have a new assistant coach, Nikki Brooks, as well as an assistant grad student, Megan Maywald. Talk to me a little bit about them and the impact that they've had as well. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, uh, you know, programs are always in flux, both uh, student athletes and staff. Uh, we were really lucky to add Nikki. She's been a great addition. Uh, she's really worked well with our keepers. Um, she's got a great personality and rapport with the girls. Obviously adding Megan, uh, a former player of ours, um, has really done a good job um, in helping with our keepers and, and uh, we're really pleased to have both of them. I'm here with senior midfielder Cheryl Cute. Cheryl, talk to me a little bit about the preseason camp and camp as what Jeff calls it. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, camp went really well this year. We all really worked hard and there was um, a lot of energy, everybody was high pressing um, defensively and the coaches were really liking that and were really energized by our energy. So it was really good. Awesome, okay, so what can the fans expect from the women's soccer team in 2013? Um, the fans can expect us to be flying around, running and working hard and working together as a team and uh, fun games, really fun games. So what can we expect from the 2013 Spartans and what style of play will it be? Well I think um, the style of play obviously is hard working, defensive um, you know, mentality. Uh, we're, we're getting back to that. Um, we're creative, uh, we're going to move the ball fast and effective, swinging the ball back and forth. Uh, we're playing much more to feet um, and much more to our forwards feet and in combinations. Um, we've been very good in the attacking third in, in little combinations between our forwards and midfielders. Now it's just putting the ball in the net and, and winning games and getting the results. Okay, well, best of luck to you guys this season, and we look forward to seeing some of your guys' games. Thank you very much. We now transition back to Spartan football and senior defensive tackle Anthony Larcival, who was told at one point this January he wouldn't be able to play football ever again, but he's back on the field. Angela Santoro, again from Get Sports Focus, has the story. Oh, I tell you, that's just a great, uh, inspiring story. Anthony Larcival. Uh, a guy who six months ago, eight months ago, we didn't know if he'd ever play football, if he'd even be able to return to school, and very concerned about his long-term health. It is an inspiring story, a young man who, who just wouldn't give up on his comeback, and he is inspirational to this football team. For our young guys to see that, I think that sends a good message to the young guys. Never, never take anything for granted and, and always have an attitude of gratitude. Imagine someone told you you could not do the one thing you love the most. Not because you didn't want to, but because your health would not allow you to. Would you shut down, or would you keep pushing against all odds? The San Jose State Spartans made a name for themselves in the 2012 football season, receiving national recognition for the first time in program history. 
The only way to cap off this 10 and 2 season would be to shut down Bowling Green and the Military Bowl in our nation's capital. As the rest of the Spartans prepared for battle, Anthony Larsoul had a battle he had to face on his own. It was December 14th and 2 in the morning I had woken up and I had vomit and diarrhea and, and I, I thought, you know, I just maybe had a simple flu and I was sick so I, I shot our trainer a message, a text message and I told him, hey, there's no way I'm going to be able to practice today. I had, last thing I remember laying in bed, shooting him a text message again saying, should I go to Kaiser or should I go to the Student Health Center? And then I guess I'd fallen asleep. That's all, that's the last thing I'd remembered. What Anthony thought would have been a nap turned into two weeks of his life he would never remember. I don't know anything was going on since laying in bed, but I was told I was rushed to the ER and then from there to the ICU and, and I was told I was in critical condition and then I was sedated, I was heavily sedated and, and I was sedated for a few days, I believe. Anthony was diagnosed with viral meningoencephalitis, an illness that infects and causes swelling in the brain. Despite missing the opportunity to go to battle with his teammates, Anthony had a lot more on his mind. Now that I'm starting to understand I'm in the hospital, I ask my doctors, what's wrong with me? When can I play football again? Well, right now, we want to keep you out of school and we want to keep you out of football for quite a while. But certainly, we want to keep you out of contact sports for 12 months. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I might never ever play again. I'm a senior, we had a new coach. He might just want to get rid of me. <laughs> Coach Carragher gave Anthony the words of encouragement he needed. He told me three key things that I remembered, and it was first, get healthy. Then we'll talk school, and then we'll talk football. Basic skills such as walking, talking, and even brushing his teeth started coming back. But playing football was on another playing field. Couldn't understand why my body couldn't move like it used to. I couldn't understand why film is so difficult to watch. Why, what, you know, why do I have to relearn a whole new defense? But I was, I was, I was depressed. It took for Neil Perry, who is our graduate assistant coach, who has come <laughs> through some adverse situations. It, told, it took for him to tell me, NGU, never give up. And that sunk in because when he had told me that, it, it, it meant the world to me because, you know, I was in a tough situation as well and that's all I kept in the back of my mind was never give up. So anybody that is dealing with something that's troubling, you know, just, I would want to tell them to never give up. We had an emotional talk yesterday, and I already told all y'all, but I'm just proud of you. Shout, shout out to Anthony Larson. We wish, we wish you could be here right now, but, you know, it, we got this one for Anthony and seniors. And uh, it's for Larsabal, Anthony Larsabal. He couldn't make it today. He's in the hospital right now. We're playing for him as a D-line. Through social media, I was able to see all my Spartan family that cared for me. I was able to see my teammates that cared for me, pictures and, and, and distant family that I hadn't seen in some time. And it, it was encouraging because that's what got me through the depression because knowing and seeing how many people cared for me meant the world to me. Anthony Larsoul steps onto the field in 2013 as a senior with the Spartans. 
I tell you what, every uh, outstanding season, I believe there's stories. There's, there's, there's strong stories, outstanding stories of, of people overcoming things and, and things that happen. And, and yes, that could be a, cor a, a key story about the success of this program. Moments of adversity will always strike in an athlete's life. But with the potential of never returning to play football again, Anthony shined through in moments of doubt. He went against all odds, displayed courage, strength, and when adversity struck, he never gave up. Personally, I'm looking forward to just being able to say I can play again. I'm just excited to see our success together. Coming up on Spartan Football Weekly, the head coach, Ron Carrigal, will join us in the studio to prepare for number four Stanford this Saturday. More on the program when we come back. Back to the program now joined in studio by San Jose State head coach Ron Carriger and coach uh, first and foremost congratulations your first FBS win as a college coach well thank you I appreciate it Justin it's fun to you know, after practicing for a month against each other to be able to go out and play a team with a different color uniform a, yeah. a different jersey and our guys came out and uh, played, a, played a good evening for the most part we got after it offensively defensively and special teams how much does that play into momentum I know San Jose State hasn't had an opening win in, in quite a while but they've been playing ranked opponents but Momentum ha has to be pretty good for, for a first win. It's big. You always want to come out the gate fast and, and start off with success and set the tone for your season. I think our guys did a good job. They were hungry. They were looking forward to our opener. They were aware we hadn't won an opener in a while, and that was one of our goals. And so mission accomplished. We, we came out and won our season opener. Of course, you look ahead now. It's a challenge this week. Stanford, a very good football team. You do have a couple extra days to prep for them. Does that help? It's nice. It's nice to have a couple extra days when you play on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I gave them Friday off. We came in on Saturday and did our introduction uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams from a, a schematic standpoint, and then got in a good practice Saturday, got another good practice in Sunday, um, gave them uh, Monday off, and then we're back at it uh, starting Tuesday. Well, one thing about it is the, uh, the Bill Walsh legacy game, and, and you may have to explain that to some of the, the kids because yeah. you know they're born in the 90s now, so they may not know who Bill Walsh was, or, or maybe not to the extent that, that we know of him, but uh, have you explained the importance of this game? to them? Do they I, know that? I have. I've told them uh, there, there are so many coaching uh, personalities that have been a part of both sides of this rivalry and, and this one in particular honors Bill Walsh uh, for all that he's done a, a San Jose State alum, uh, a grad assistant here under Bob Bronson, a head coach at Stanford University. So this is a great game and rivalry. But you know, Justin, you could go back in time and you could pull six names just to name a few of big names. Uh, uh, Fielding Yost, Pop Warner, yeah. uh, you go back Dick Vermeil as well as Bill Walsh, Terry Shea's been on both sides of the uh, fence in this rivalry, Jack Elway mm -hmm. is another name, and John Ralston, just to name six coaches that are Hall of Fame type coaches. Now, did you have any direct interaction with Bill Walsh? And I mean, maybe you, you played against him when he was a head coach at Stanford? I did. Played, uh, uh, I was a grad assistant, and then when uh, he was finished coaching there, he uh, and Terry Donahue, my college coach, had a good relationship, and he was down in L.A. playing uh, tennis with Coach Donahue, and Coach Donahue asked me to give him a ride home back to his hotel, <laughs> and so I was just, here I am riding with a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, I was hoping the Toyota Corolla was, the 15-year-old Corolla was clean when I put him in the, when we got in the car, but gave him a ride back to the hotel and got to quiz him about some, some of his favorite routes and some of his favorite teams, but what a memory in my mind of having that time with uh, Coach Bill Walsh. Well, you see, it's the first game for Stanford this week. Uh, last week we saw some, some big teams go down in the first game of the year, Boise State, San Diego State. Uh, when you look at Stanford, do you think that you just don't know really know what to expect out of them? They are the number four seed, but uh, but you really don't know. Right, correct. You have to go on what you've seen them do last year, what they've been successful, the personality of their head coach, of their coaching staff. I think we have a grasp of, of who they are, 
uh, what their strengths are. Um, but again, we haven't seen them play uh, since uh, a year ago, yeah. and they've lost some key seniors uh, in their program, mm -hmm. and so they have to define who their what their personality is for the 2013 season. And I think the other side of that coin is that maybe they've had the whole fall camp to prepare for you guys. We've uh, we only have a week, and they've had all fall camp to prepare for us. But I'll tell you, I'll take getting the game in under our belt first because sometimes those first game you work out some some kinks if some things have to be ironed out you make some of those first game mistakes and I feel like our team if we can learn from those mistakes we made and continue to build we'll, we'll our, our momentum's going in the right direction. Some of the players from last year obviously remember that game a year ago lost by three with a couple of chances in the fourth quarter are you seeing that the players are, are kind of recognizing and building up for this game? They're excited they're excited not only uh, was they, they felt a uh, uh, a taste of, of that game being in their hands, of, of it being so close, but they know the rivalry, they know the 22 miles apart, uh, they know people on the Stanford football team, so it, it's a great rivalry, not just because of geographic location and proximity, but the programs are familiar with one another, and as we alluded to earlier, there's a lot of carryover mm -hmm. from the coaching staff in the history of both programs. Let's go ahead and talk some players. Uh, Kevin Hogan emerged last year for them after that Notre Dame loss uh, came out and won the Rose Bowl and was the MVP of that game. Very young, talented quarterback. He is. I think he really... He really helped their their program, uh, their offense get on solid ground. An outstanding runner. Uh, he is tough to bring down. He's tough to grasp. He makes plays. He completed a nice percentage of his passes. Uh, he's 6'4", 230 pounds. Uh, just physically a big, strong runner, and they like the ball in his hands. It's kind of one of those guys that will run for a lot if you forget about him and, and leave him open. Definitely. If you fall asleep, uh, maybe chasing the, the, the lead runner and, and he'll pull it and back door, mm -hmm. keep the ball out the back door or, or lull the secondary to sleep with their power run game. He'll throw a play action pass that, that keeps you awake and uh, a very, very good athletic quarterback. Well, now one thing that's kind of a question mark for them is that they lost their five top receivers from a year ago. So what targets do they have and, and what, what are they going to look like on, on the wide receiver well, position? Well, I tell you, when you're a program like Stanford, three BCS Bowls, I, I think it's more of you don't necessarily recruit, you draft. You, 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 their, their program's been on such high ground. They can, and not just in a California, in a regional scale, but on a national scale, they can pick and choose. So a program like that, I think, can just reload uh, year in and year out. Yes, they've lost some key players, and maybe some of their new players don't have those, mm -hmm. those big, that big game experience. But it's a matter of reloading. I know they have a lot of skilled athletes in their program, and, and it's a matter of them getting those guys out in, in game competition. We saw a pretty sizable offensive line Sacramento State had, but this is a, a big Pac-12 offensive line with uh, four guys over 300 pounds. So San Jose State's defense played well against Sacramento State's big guys. Uh, what can you expect from, from these? Well, definitely. And, and the thing that, that stands out about Stanford, they remind me of a Southeastern Conference football team. And I mean that from, that's a compliment in they're so athletic up front. They're big guys. They're 300 pounds or mm -hmm. are athletic. They can move. They can run. They can trap. They can pull. All those types of things. Defense their two ends are six foot six, rangy guys that play well in space, and I think you see a lot of that in the SEC. Also, the, their personality—they're a power run football team where they they like to run the ball, they huddle like traditional teams do, uh, and I and I think you see that, and, and and that's a that's a tough task for a team to face because they continue to come at you, come off the ball with leverage, and want to run the football, have a good play action pass attack, and they do a good job of it. Well, now on defensive side of it, uh, they have a lot of returners, and it seems like you know what's coming on defense, and it's a very good defensive squad. Oh, definitely. Uh, Shane Scove and Trent Murphy, two guys that are just athletic, that run around, they rangy, make plays, uh, they're tough, they run well, all those things. Uh, I see Stanford as a team, those guys, the offensive line, uh, a group of, of future NFL players. They have a lot of guys on their roster that will be in NFL camps, and that's a compliment to them as far as the evaluation process of, of picking the right guys to come into their program. All right, that's San Jose State head coach Ron Carriger prepping for Stanford this week. Thanks for joining us, coach. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. That wraps up this week's program. San Jose State takes on number four Stanford this Saturday at 8 o'clock. Coverage on the flagship station, 1590 KLIV, will begin at 7.30. Our next Spartan Football Weekly will be September 21st, after the bye week and before Minnesota. Thanks for stopping by.